So, you just made it to the end of Fate the Wing Saga, and you're thinking to yourself, that just happened, a lot of stuff, what's going on? Can, can we talk about it? This is your place and space to talk about the ending, the finale of Fate the Winx Saga. I need your comments down below. Today, we're going to uh, kind of run through some plot points of the final episode, speculate on the future of this show, where it goes from here, and of course talk about what it is based off of. Of course, I can't do that justice because, like I said, my non-spoiler review, I haven't seen the original. I have not seen the Winx Club. Therefore, you're not going to get many comparisons out of me. But we are going to talk about this show as a whole, what it's set up for our characters, and what in the world just happened. If you guys like these spoiler-filled videos for Netflix content, be sure to drop a thumbs up and come back to this channel. We're talking Netflix and streaming every single weekend. All right, let's, uh, let's digest. So episode six, in my opinion, is the best episode of the season. It really goes out with a bang, and it sets up various plot points for the future. The summary of the episode is, as the Alfians fight for survival, the truth about Bloom's destiny is finally revealed. Can she help defeat the Burned Ones, or will evil outperform magic? And this is a spoiler video, so you guys know I want to start with the fact that we got the wings. She is as powerful as promised and oh my goodness this scene especially for fans of the original animated show i know there have been a few disconnections some have loved it some haven't loved it uh, but this scene i think can bring everyone together and say all right cool she has a great power set and she definitely takes on the burned ones uh what a payoff for this character who i believe is one of the best developed characters of the entire show uh, this was when everything came to a head and the action was thoroughly impressive, but let's start out with Rosalind's plan, who was the headmistress at Alfia, and she was the strategist who led the previous generation in combat against the Burn Ones. And you all know the story, eventually she was ushered out of that position, but what people didn't know is that she had kind of uh, spirited two infants from Asterdale before the bombing, and those infants were Beatrix and Bloom. And so essentially, here's what happened. They gave Bloom to this California couple that we see who are her parents now, who were about to lose their real baby, and they didn't even know that they had this secret, powerful fire fairy as their daughter. And we see the scene at the end where she finally reveals all to her parents. It, it actually was a nice scene with some good music. They did highlight through a few things that I wanted to see played out a bit more, but with only six episodes, you can only do so much. And I think it was very sweet for what it was. And all of this was planned. I mean, she was counting on her powers manifesting at that moment. She was unleashing the Burn Ones just to test her powers. And of course, we talked about it a bit earlier, she has wings. And because she has this ancient magic in her, she actually undoes the curse that turns the Burn Ones into what they are, which is extremely OP, in my opinion. She is a very powerful fairy, and she's going to continue to unlock these powers as we go through future seasons. But then we learn that Rosalind is even more evil than what we thought in the first place. She's... she's double evil. No, that's stupid. And Farrah seems like the character that knows all, right? Well, this one plot point in particular, uh, she doesn't even know about. But the situation that I was just talking about did not happen in a town full of people. It happened in a town full of blood witches, and it was actually uh, the humans that were trying to take the magic from the fairies. And Bloom was actually kidnapped because they knew she was special. They knew she was powerful. I made Harry Potter comparisons in my non-spoiler review, and obviously you look at the character of Harry Potter and what he is known for, he is the chosen one, he is the boy who lived, and we can kind of look at Bloom as a similar type of character, one that everyone is after because of her power set, but also one that has to learn or has to take her own path in life, not one that others have set for her, especially you're looking at the character of Rosalind, who does something about as crazy that I'll talk about here in just a second as Voldemort does in Harry Potter, but that's just kind of the path she's setting out for herself. Now, again, I don't know how all of this compares to the animated show. I would love to know this down below. Uh, how much does this differ? Is this a plot point in what you all are familiar with? And if you haven't seen it, how are you enjoying the video so far? Is it good? Probably not, but you know, I, I decided not to put my face in it because it's not good. 
And let's go ahead and talk about that scene that I was just mentioning at the main end of the episode when Rosalind just, you know, having a good conversation with Farah, a one-on-one, -on -one, right? It's it's good versus evil. There is no way you're going to take over while I'm in town. <laughs> and she gets picked up and murdered. Not only murdered, she gets Patrick Starred lifted up in the air and her neck breaks and her corpse is buried with the fallen burned ones. I might, what? What? And so as our heroes are just coming back to campus, all happy, go lucky, walking together. Ah, oh, it's cute. It's it's the Winx Club. It's it's what everyone wants to see. Oh, oh no! Rosalind has taken over the school, and now under her control, this is not a space in which they had left. This is a space that is not safe for fairies. I repeat. Season two is going to be nuts. Now, is Rosalind just horrible for the sake of being horrible, or is she doing this for a reason? I always say, what makes a great villain a great villain is a motivation or a series of motivations that they have that you may not necessarily agree with, but you can understand why they're doing it. And we did learn a few things in this season that uh, gives you reason to speculate as to why she is doing what she's doing. But we need something else. And I have a feeling Season 2 is hopefully going to bring us that. But the fact that she um, did what she did to, to Farrah uh, unexpectedly, yeah. No, she's not good. She's she's not good. I would like to talk about Silva and Andreas really quick because that storyline uh, was one of the more interesting ones in my opinion. Obviously, we saw where Silva killed Andreas in this battle that decided, or at least had a hand in deciding the fate of Asterdale. Silva was not on board with Rosalind's plan to take down an entire city, so Andreas had to stop him because he was willing to do whatever it took to follow his leader. So what happened? Silva killed Andreas in that battle. Well, at least he thought he killed Andreas. Turns out he was actually living in hiding the entire time. So he returns and essentially told everyone that Silva tried to murder him. And that's when the army arrests Silva, a friendship gone bad, about as bad as possible. We saw the two at the beginning of the series and what they were, uh, but to see that fallout and where that storyline could lead in a future season is going to be fascinating. So where does all of this leave us? Well, we have a clear-cut villain. We have a clear-cut hero and her team. Uh, Bloom is clearly at the forefront. Uh, what I would like to see in Season 2 is maybe one a bit more of a resolve. There was a clear love triangle throughout this season. I would like... Not necessarily for them to hit on that more, but at least try to move away from some of those cliches and define those relationships a bit better. I would also just like to see our team come together and fight together. Now, I don't know if that's a thing from the original show, but it feels like it is, especially from seeing those posters. I would also like the show to embrace color a bit more. its I don't want to use the word dull, but I could have used more of a pop like we saw in the scene where she brings us those epic powers and her wings. Uh, overall, I, I do believe this was the best episode of the bunch. If you guys would like to know my thoughts on the series as a whole, my non-spoiler review is on this channel. I appreciate you big time for supporting this channel, leaving your comments. Feel free to leave as many as you want about this show, what you like, what you didn't like, and come back because we're going to have spoiler reviews on plenty more Netflix shows. That's what we do. That's the focus on this channel. And I appreciate you big time for tuning in. All right, guys, I'm going to go sprout some wings and take on some burn ones in the yard. My review for Malcolm and Marie was on this channel yesterday. And Monday, the embargo lifts for The Little Things, the brand new movie coming to HBO Max starring Denzel Washington. Stay tuned. I'll see you guys soon.